Most likely either you or someone has asked you this question, how do you serve God with joy? Uh, what is the true heart of a servant and what is the cost of serving? Uh, in this episode, we're going to look at the big question, what is the heart of a servant and a few practical things that's going to help you on your journey with God. Thank you all for joining us. If this is your first time, would you consider subscribing to our channel? And if you have already subscribed, uh, please turn on the notifications so you'll get updates for our upcoming episodes. So what is the true heart of a servant? Uh, in the last episode, we looked at this uh, passage from Mark chapter 10, where Jesus says, I did not come to be s served, but I came to serve each one of you. And the context of that passage is two of his disciples, James and John, who is really close to him, goes to Jesus and this is their request. They're like, uh, grant them to sit one at his right and one to the left in his glory. All right. And they were asking Jesus for a possession that they, they felt rightfully that belongs to somebody that loves God with all their heart. And I want to just touch on a few things when it comes to the heart of a servant. Uh, first of all, uh, what is your attitude for serving? What kind of attitude do we carry when we serve? Uh, in Mark chapter 10, again, uh, Jesus says that whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. Basically, Jesus says he that wants to be at the greatest has to become the servant of all. Uh, Jesus says that the position to my left, to the right, uh, it belongs to and it's reserved to the ones that are willing to serve. And it's not just willing to serve, but they have the right attitude. The posture of their heart is in the right place. So God is looking for a people uh, that their heart is ready and willing to serve, not based on the position, but irrespective of their position in the kingdom of God. Uh, it's the second thing when it comes to serving, serving is not about the position itself. It's about the posture of your heart. Uh, think about this, when is the last time that you stopped for a moment and asked, how can I serve someone versus trying to make serving an end to a means for something else that you want. First Peter 2 talks about how we should live at all times as servants of God. Uh, in chapter 4 of the same book, it talks about how He has equipped us for serving. And Ephesians 6, it talks about doing the will of God from the heart. So it's not just important that we do the will of God, but it's important that we do it from the heart with the right posture in place. In fact, one of the things that happens is when the Holy Spirit comes upon each one of us that we get the desire to help and serve our fellow brothers and sisters. Your heart is tuned to serving people because that is the heart of God. And when we lose the sight of serving, we lose the sight of the grace and what God has given to each one of us personally. So in fact, serving has to do more with our personal character than it has to do with who we are serving. Uh, so when, at the end of the day, the posture of our heart matters. Uh, and the next thing when it comes to uh, the heart of a servant, uh, true serving will cost you. Uh, Jesus, again in Mark chapter 10, the same passage, he says, whoever is great among you must become the servant. Uh, David says it this way, I don't want to give, I will not give God anything that costs me nothing. And so if serving is not costing you, then it's not true service to begin. Uh, Mark chapter 10, 45, the same portion where Jesus says, I did not come to be served, but to serve. The last end of that portion, it says that, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So the cost of serving is actually death to the flesh. The cost of serving is shaping of personal character. 
the cost of serving is killing every single personal agenda for the goal and the purpose of heaven. Uh, he who wants to serve has to get to that place where you deny yourself, you take up the cross and follow Jesus himself. So when Jesus and disciples, they entered into the upper room, uh, the disciples, especially James and John, they were looking for a prominent place to sit a prominent place next to Jesus to sit while Jesus was looking for a prominent place to serve his fellow brothers. So when we look at Jesus as our model, uh, it's much more of a noble character to serve, to find a position, to find a prominent place to serve than to say, Jesus, I love you, so I should be sitting next to you. If you struggle, to be a servant, most likely it has nothing to do with your desire to serve, but it probably has to do with your heart. Your heart may have shifted away from the heart of God. So remember, the fire and favor of God always falls on sacrifice. So that's a good place to be where you know that it is costing you serving is costing you. It's costing your personal agenda. It's costing everything within you. But there is a joy to do it because you are not just serving your brother, you are serving God himself. I want to challenge you today to position your heart, to position your attitude, to position and posture your heart, everything within you to respond to this model that Jesus showed his disciples. It's giving a if it's giving God a gift that cost you something, it's choosing to decrease so that God can increase. It's by finding joy, not by finding a prominent place to sit with God, but it's finding joy by looking around to find a prominent place to serve your fellow brothers. In fact, if you want to be to the left and right of Jesus, you have to be serving along Jesus right there where he's serving his fellow brothers and sisters. I pray that this blessed you. Thanks for watching and God bless you.